Foremost rode Henry Chatelon, our guide and hunter, a fine athletic figure mounted on a hardy gray Wyandotte pony. He wore a white blanket coat, a broad hat of felt, moccasins and trousers of deer skin ornamented along the seams with rows of long fringes. His knife was stuck in his belt, his bullet pouch and powder horn hung at his side, and his rifle lay before him, resting against the high pommel of his saddle, which, like all his equipments, had seen hard service and was much the worse for wear. Shaw followed close, mounted on a little sorrel horse, and leading a larger animal by a rope. His outfit, which resembled mine, had been provided with a view to use rather than ornament. It consisted of a plain black Spanish saddle with holsters of heavy pistols, a blanket rolled up behind, and the trail rope attached to his horse's neck hanging coiled in front. He carried a double-barreled smoothbore while I had a rifle of some 15 pounds weight. At that time, our attire, though far from elegant, bore some marks of civilization and offered a very favorable contrast to the inimitable shabbiness of our appearance on the return journey. A red flannel shirt, belted around the waist like a frock, then constituted our upper garment. Moccasins had supplanted our failing boots, and the remaining essential portion of our attire consisted of an extraordinary article manufactured by a squaw out of smoked buckskin. The horses and mules were turned loose to feed. We had just taken our seats at breakfast, or rather reclined in the classic mode, when an exclamation from Henry Chatelon and a shout of alarm from the captain gave warning of some casualty, and looking up, we saw the whole band of animals, 23 in number, filing off for the settlements, the incorrigible Pontiac at their head, jumping along with hobbled feet at a gait much more rapid than graceful. Three or four of us ran to cut them off, dashing as best as we might through the tall grass, which was glittering with dewdrops. After a race of a mile or more, Shaw caught a horse. Tying the trail rope by way of bridle around the animal's jaw and leaping upon his back, he got in advance of the remaining fugitives, while we, soon bringing them together, drove them in a crowd up to the tents, where each man caught and saddled his own. Then were heard lamentations and curses, for half the horses had broken their hobbles, and many were seriously galled by attempting to run in fetters. 